My name is Ben Battle. I'm the Assistant Ocean Rescue Supervisor for the Town of Kittleville Hills Ocean Rescue Division. We just got through our training cycle, about 55 lifeguards on staff this year. A little bit of a different change this year with our flag system. Our warning flags, we've added a double red flag. So on a particular day when the surf is very hazardous, the most hazardous for even the most seasoned swimmers, we'll be putting up a double red flag, which would indicate swimming prohibited, trying not only to keep the people safe, but also our first responders. Beyond that, our normal flag system is red flags are high rip current risk, rough surf. We are advising people to stay out of the water and then a yellow flag is moderate rip current risk and it's probably good to think twice before you enter the water. There's been some discussion on how we make the decision uh, based on the warning flag system and that's something that we think about the day before, maybe even the week before. We're looking at forecasting, we're looking at the rip current model through NOAA, we're looking at the weather. Is it going to be a nice day? Is it going to be northeast at 35? end of every day I try to take a look at the water condition see what's going on right now we've got a little rip pulling right over there some other ones over there some people in the water having a good night but this is a real good indication to see how the water's trending from one day to the next so tomorrow first thing we'll do is go for another drive see how much think conditions have changed knowing what the forecast is but also looking how the forecast relates to what we see on a regular basis one other thing that we think about when trying to make the decision on the warning flags, we're asking our lifeguards after physical training how it was pulling. We may be in the water ourselves, and we're trying to see exactly what the ocean is doing and what it might do throughout the day before we make that decision. Just to make it clear, the absence of flags does not mean safe waters. So our lifeguards aren't on the beach 24 hours a day. And when they are on the beach, that is the safest time to swim. So that's for the town of Kittleville Hills, that's between 10 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. until Labor Day. Along with swimming near a lifeguard, lifeguards can be a good education source for the different hazards in the ocean, such as shore break, blowouts, and rip currents. A shore break is the wave that breaks directly on shore. It's important to keep your eyes on the water when entering and exiting the water. Injuries with a shore break can be as little as an abrasion to a cervical spine injury. Along with shore break, there are other hazards such as a blowout. That's also known as a west wind day. That's when the wind is blowing from the west onto the ocean. So hazards with that would be having a blow up raft, paddle boards, kayaks. You're going to be pushed out to sea and it's difficult to get back in. One of the most dangerous hazards on the beach are rip currents. You can identify that as the rush of water from shore back out behind the waves in between the sandbars. If you are caught in a rip current, you're going to be pulled backwards, and it's important to stay calm, signal for help, and swim towards the breaking waves. We talk about hazards in the ocean, but when you come to the beach, there are also hazards on land. These hazards include heat, the sun, and hydration. Days on the beach can become very hot, and the sand itself can get up to 150 degrees. This hot sand can burn your feet, your children's feet, and your pet's feet. Sunscreen is best applied before you go to the beach on cool, dry skin. Also, bring shade and hydration, as in plenty of water. Some other hazards include equipment left on the beach and digging holes. Remember, take only pictures and leave only footprints. Swim near a lifeguard, don't forget.